with their droopy ears and gloomy faces. Bloodhounds are often compared to solemn grandpas. But these guys are like war vets. Yep, beneath their stoic exterior lies a legacy of remarkable accomplishments. For instance, did you know that bloodhounds hold the world record for being the first animal whose evidence is admissible in court? Well, today on Dogs Wiz, join us as we explore the role of bloodhounds in criminal investigation and the reliability of these canine detectives. I'm sure you're already familiar with the invaluable role dogs play in investigation, whether criminal or not. From detecting drugs to locating missing individuals, dogs have consistently proven themselves as incredibly versatile allies. You'll find countless tales of remarkable dogs tracking criminals over vast distances and surprisingly even aiding in the preservation of endangered species. The applications are truly endless. And this is nothing new either. The history of detecting dogs stretches back centuries, with roots reaching as far back as the initial search for the notorious Jack the Ripper. Well, what then makes our bloodhounds so special? Well, like I already mentioned, Bloodhounds achieved a significant milestone by becoming the first animals whose evidence is admissible in court. This remarkable achievement has even earned them a place in the Guinness Book of World Records. Several American state courts have recognized that bloodhound trailing evidence is admissible, provided that certain conditions are met and procedures are followed. For instance, the dog must be of purebred lineage and have undergone appropriate training specifically for tracking humans. States such as Alabama, Florida, New York, Ohio, and Texas are among those that operate uphold this rule. On the other hand, Nebraska, Illinois, Iowa, and Indiana have adopted a more nuanced approach, where admissibility of such evidence might be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. Now you might ask, why bloodhounds? Well, there's a reason these guys are the undisputed champs when it comes to tracking. You see, scent is often called the forgotten evidence because of how underutilized it is. Sure, it is deposited in every crime scene, but it is very rarely collected and used in investigations. This is where tracking dogs, particularly bloodhounds, shine. Often described as a nose with a dog attached, one thing you can always count on with a bloodhound is their extraordinary sense of smell. Scientists estimate that these olfactory detectives boast nearly 300 million scent receptors in their nose, significantly surpassing the average dog's 220 million. That's more than 40 times greater than that of a human's, which makes their sense of smell an estimated thousand times better than ours. To put it in perspective, bloodhounds smell things the way that we see them. Every object has a unique scent image, and they can use this image to pick out the exact scent trail they need. This way, bloodhounds can follow what are known as cold trails that are over 300 hours old and may stick to this trail for more than 100 miles. Even if they lose this trail somewhere along the way, your typical bloodhound will keep searching around until they can pick the scent back up again. The oldest trail followed by a bloodhound was actually over 330 hours or almost 14 days old. This record was set in Oregon in 1954 when a family that had gone missing was unfortunately found deceased. The bloodhound's incredible olfactory prowess, however, is not a recent discovery. In fact, their history of trailing stretches as far back as the mid-14th century. During the medieval period, bloodhounds were primarily utilized as limers or lion hounds in hunting. These dogs were handled on leashes or lions to track down hearts or boars before they were hunted down by packs of hounds known as rachis. Bloodhounds were highly prized for this role thanks to their extraordinary ability to follow the cold scent trail of individual animals, and it turns out humans were no exception. There are stories written in medieval Scotland of figures like Robert the Bruce, and William Wallace being trailed by sleuth hounds, which is an old term for bloodhounds. And if you fast forward to the 17th century, you'll find the first report of a trial of the bloodhound's trailing abilities written by the first modern chemist, Robert Boyle. He described how one hound successfully tracked a man for seven miles along a path frequented by people, ultimately locating him in an upstairs room of a house. In modern times, one bloodhound named Nick Carter has become the archetype of the trailing bloodhound. His fame has undoubtedly contributed to the image bloodhounds have today of ruthless men trailers. Born in 1900, Nick Carter was owned and handled by Captain G.B. Mulliken of Lexington, Kentucky. He is credited with helping in the capture of 650 criminals, including one that required him to follow a trail that was 12 days old. But Nick's story is just one of many. A quick search will lead you to numerous stories of diligent bloodhounds who have helped in all sorts of investigations, from missing people and theft to even homicide. The breed's versatility and effectiveness really shine true. What's more, all those years of tracking and a little selective breeding have 
transformed bloodhounds into the ultimate trailing machines. It's not just their noses, their entire physiology helps in the process. Their long, pendulous ears are set to prevent wind from scattering nearby skin cells while the dog's nose is on the ground. They also help sweet scent particles into the nostril area. At the same time, the wrinkles on their lips and neck, known as the shawl, trap stray scent particles. However, not everyone sees these distinctive features as advantageous. Some even regard these features as a sort of handicap. Now, you might be curious why bloodhounds aren't the top choice for police dogs given their exceptional sense of smell. Aren't German Shepherds and Belgian Malinois more commonly seen in these roles? Well, the truth is, being a good police dog requires more than just a keen sense of smell. The dog needs to be trainable, cooperative with a handler, eager to please, and have a strong prey drive. While bloodhounds can certainly possess these traits, they're just not as commonly found in them as they are in diligent Shepherd and Malinois breeds. But let's ask the big question now. How reliable is bloodhound trailing evidence? Well, it's not as dependable as we might hope, sadly. While bloodhounds are undoubtedly skilled trackers, we can't place unwavering trust in them, especially if they haven't undergone appropriate training. As a result, the weight and significance of bloodhound trailing evidence can fluctuate depending on various factors. Environmental conditions, the age and complexity of the scent trail, the presence of conflicting scents or contamination, and the experience and influence of the dog handler can significantly impact the reliability of findings. As a result, bloodhound evidence has been contested in court multiple times. The earliest documented case exploring the admissibility of bloodhound evidence comes from Hodge versus State way back in 1893. However, the evidence was ultimately deemed admissible. Ever since, bloodhound trailing evidence has occasionally been challenged in a few cases. For instance, in Sprouse v. Commonwealth from 1909, the qualification of the dogs and their training weren't clear enough to make the evidence reliable. Most courts, however, usually agree that bloodhound evidence can be used if there is proof that dogs were trained well and that the situation makes it likely the person being tracked is the one responsible. And now, we want to hear from you. Weighing the reliability of bloodhound trailing evidence in court is a complex issue. So do you believe bloodhound trailing evidence is sufficiently reliable for courtroom use or do you think it warrants further scrutiny? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching.